Hello, 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 and welcome to the Failing Forward podcast. Failing Forward is about the successes we find after enduring failure. Each episode is an opportunity to hear interviews and stories from professional athletes, entrepreneurs, executives, doctors, and loved ones who have fallen down, struggled, and transformed. They'll be sharing how they got to where they are today and the lessons they learned along the way. We'll be covering topics in entrepreneurship, careers, relationships, holistic wellness, mindfulness, gut health, and finding your competitive edge. With raw human moments and empowering information, this podcast is here to inspire you, remind you of your greatness, and give you the knowledge to up-level in every area of your life. My name is Nikki Loesch. I'm your host for today, and I am so excited to welcome a dear friend of mine and our guest, Mr. Michael Huey. Michael, are you with us? Niku, what's up, my friend? It's good to be here. Good to be here. Good to be here. Very excited to get this to get this interview going. Michael and I have been friends for the last several months. We actually met in the club on Clubhouse. And I was just fascinated the first time I heard him speak about gut health and sleep and nutrigenomics and all this amazing stuff. And I'm very into biohacking right now. And then the more we started to talk and the more we started to build this relationship, I've learned that he's a man of God, that he is a spiritual leader of his home, that he's very into fitness as the number one personal trainer in the Florida area. Um, he has quite a few years of experience on me in all things fitness. As long as she's been alive. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he's, he's almost twice my age. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. No, I, I love you, Michael. I'm not um, twice her age, but she's exaggerating. No. That's okay. But I don't know, 19 years. I feel, I feel her age experience. I feel her age. Yeah. Amen. That's all that matters. Age is just a number. hundred percent. Age is just a number. You've had 19 years, more opportunity to have more experience than me. That's really all that it is. Other than that, exactly. we're fighting the good fight to, to learn about ourselves, to be the best version of ourselves in every way. And what I'm so excited about is you truly are the epitome of the ideal person for the Feeling Forward podcast, because you've done all things from fitness to nutrition, to mindfulness, to gut reset, to spirituality. And I just cannot wait to peel back the layers and really pour in value to our audience today. So with that said, let me go and do a quick bio. Michael is originally from Lancaster, Ohio. After high school, he attended the Ohio State University, where he was a four-year letterman in track and field. What? You like running? Yeah. No. 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 Okay, yeah, okay. Yes and no. I mean, I used to like running, but like, well, it's funny because I know you're going to say this because you do not like running. I was about to question our friendship. No, I was about to say because you do not like running. And, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, so, so no. I mean, yes and no. I used to like running, but... I also weighed 170 pounds back then. Now I weigh 230 pounds, but I have the same size waist as I did back then at 34 inch waist, which is good. But no, I don't have a passion for love. I, I have a, I actually have a passion for golf, which is something that Niku's husband, Kyle, is, has a real passion from. So I've taken golf and replaced running with golf. So, yeah. I love that. And you actually received a degree in nutrition, exercise science, and sports management. How cool is that? Right. It's pretty awesome. Were you recently nominated for an honorary PhD? Yeah. And I think I'll get it within the next two to five years. And, but you know what? It's, it's funny. My wife and I are talking about this. She's like, well, what if you don't, you know, you didn't go back to school like they wanted you to. And I was like, well, Hey, my identity is not in those words. That's after my name. My identity is in the one who created me, Amen. not the names after my, you know, or before or whatever, you know, the doctor or, or the the BS or the MS or whatever, but yeah, just who I am and, and who God created me to be. So yeah. Amen. And you went, you have an eight year theology degree in Christian studies from Christian life school of theology and you're a licensed minister. Yes. Just Pretty last incredible. year. Yeah. Just last year. Yep. Incredible. You're a master educator for the American council of exercise, 25 plus certifications from fitness, nutrition to anti-aging. You are the founder and CEO of he fluence, the number one problem solving coaching company on the planet. I don't know. It might be second to elevated tribe. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He fluence. He fluence in his name. I love that. Yes. If you guys are watching this interview on YouTube right now, you'll see my background versus his background. I'm in my daughter's room because Hers is the bed. Over my office Hers is the bed. Mine is Hers a bed, is bed. And, and a TV and drapery and a bathroom. And his is this beautiful custom made banner with his company name all over it and 75 hard and fasting and just amazing. John amazing. Maxwell, 
This is Niku. You're about to share something next. So go on to the next thing. and I'll, I'll share what, what I have here on my little thing right here with me. In 2019, he received the Monumental Business Award at Thrive, which has been voted by Forbes Inc. and Huffington Post as the number one entrepreneur event of the year for the past five years. Wow. Okay. Congratulations, my friend. Yeah. Monumental Achievement of Business Award. Yeah. So that was awesome. Incredible. Super surprising. Yep. Um, you were married to your wife, Lisa. You guys have been together for 25 plus years. You now live in 13, 13 years. I've oh, lived in yeah. 25 years in Tampa. Yep. 25 years in Tampa. Yep. Beautiful. So 13 years with his beautiful bride and they love God and serving others. I love this. This is amazing. We're going to dive in. We're yep. Let's start. Let's start at the top and a work our way to the bottom. You started off in fitness. This is really what happened in college. You were into track and field. You were a letterman. You went to school for fitness science. How did you transition from being passionate about fitness and running and all those things to then moving and transitioning into nutrition? Let's talk about that failing forward journey. Yeah. So um, I believe it's, it was all, I realized that 70% of our, of, of what we became and how our bodies function was in what we put in our mouth. Right. And so I had that opportunity, you know, it's funny, you know, having the availability, you know, just like um, your husband, Kyle had the opportunity to play professional sports. Um, a lot of times, you know, everybody asks me that, like, well, why didn't you play professional sports? And, you know, I, I, I qualified for, um, I, I just missed qualifying for Olympic trials in 1996. And, 1992 and three of my teammates made the Olympic team, which if you know much about sports, it's a very rare thing that three people from one college team make an Olympic team, let alone even qualify for the trials or do anything like that. And I think that for me, and I started realizing the shift and, and it's obviously that was the 20th century. Now we're in the 21st century. So things, a lot of things changed back then in the eighties, when I grew up, um, things were different. We didn't have cell phones or computers, right? Like we literally, had to do our research like at the library <laughs> right and then i realized um and i started reading books nico i started reading books on nutrition and how could i perform better and you know because i was told i'd never graduate from college i'd never you know i never graduate from high school never go to college um i started looking at the health history of my family and i was like well i'm just gonna i'm not gonna be that statistic my identity is not going to be in what my family was or what other people have said. I, I, had, I had a principal tell me that I would never graduate from high school. And, um, and then I went to a school the following year and his daughter was the first person that I got to speak to. And her and I ended up becoming the, the athletes of the year in our school. And, and so I just took hard work and dedication. Uh, my, my cousin, Mark was my inspiration. He was actually the best man in my wedding. And um, he allowed me to realize that hard work went a long way. And even though, you know, I didn't have the best relationship with my dad growing up, uh, my dad did show me some things that I implemented, like hard work and dedication and boundaries. And, you know, I worked in construction every summer and I would come home and I would run. I would do heels. I would shoot baskets in the dark with a, a, a light shining on a pole. And, um, you know, or I'd pull my car up and turn the headlights on and I'd shoot hoops at nighttime in the park across the street. So I just realized that, you know, I went from from the drive of athleticism into the drive of serving. And, you know, and then I started digging into the Bible and I started reading about how God desired us to take care of our temple. Um, it's funny, I'm, I'm preparing for a speech this weekend at a conference I'm speaking at on Sunday. And um, I kind of like to do this, Niku, this will this I'll finish with this is I I. I like to, to serve. So I like to make sure that everybody else is kind of, you know, this from just knowing me for a little bit of time. I, I really like to make sure that other people, that there's not a lot of confusion, that there's not, you know, a lot of my wife always uses, you know, uh, not too many cooks in the kitchen or whatever. Right. And so um, I like to make sure that other people are served before I'm served. And so I have these four keynote speeches that I have had that, that impact thousands of lives. And, um, I told the, the director of the conference to let everybody else submit their stuff first and then show me what's being talked about. And then I'll pick which one I'm going to do. And sure enough, almost all the ones that were submitted, nine of them had something related to one of my topics that I was going to speak of. And I was like, Oh no, I'm going to have to put together another keynote. And literally a keynote takes you about 15 to 30 hours, depending on what you do, how much time you put into it, the, 
if you're a perfectionist like me and you really want to, you want to make a massive impact, you kind of do it. So, um, mine is on, on, does God honor our, how we take care of our bodies? And really, if you think about it, this is, this is how I, I would finish answering this question is that I realize that it's really first the physical and then the spiritual, because if I don't have my health, how am I going to be able to, you, you know, a lot of people look at, it's funny, Brian Benstock talked about this this morning on Breakfast with Champions when Niku was, was attempting to help him with this. Um, and, and, and she, she said, he said, you know, look at all these, these NBA coaches, right? Like they're overweight, they're obese, right? Like, and you see, you look back in the eighties at the coaches in the eighties and they weren't, they were fit. They were healthy, like Pat Riley and, and, um, Phil Jackson, you know, all these guys. And then you look nowadays and there's, there's a few that are, you know, Nick nurse, the coach of Milwaukee bucks is pretty fit. There's some fit guys, Brad Stevens from the Celtics is pretty fit. You know, Kyle, you know, Kyle could tell you about some of the baseball coaches. A lot of those guys are super fit, you know, Tony La Russa, you know, some of the people nowadays, you know, they're fit, they're healthy, you know, Aaron Boone of the Yankees and, and, you know, all these, all these guys, they're, they're former players that are now healthy. Right. And, and so we have to kind of look at that. And so I strive to, I wanted to make sure that the latter days of my life were not, were the best. Like, so now when I transition into that, I transitioned into knowing that even though if you, my wife took some pictures of me the other day, Niku, I don't know if you saw, I posted some of them. I didn't realize how fit I was, right? Like literally I, my wife's like, you are freaking unbelievably fit. Like you're 50 some years old. You got like this, you know, you got abs and you, you got muscles all over your body and you weigh 230 some pounds and you have the same size waist you did when you weighed 179 pounds. Right. So I think for me, it was learning to be able that everybody was different, that I needed to be able to make a massive impact on people. So that's awesome. Hi, Kai. Yeah, he snuck in. My my husband tries his best to to manage him, but sometimes, you know, he has to find his mama. Can you say hi to Michael? No. No? Okay. <laughs> so as you were speaking, I was trying to find the verse in the Bible that talks about health and where God huh? says that we need to make health our priority, but I can't find it because I'm not I'm not good at that like you are. Do you remember where that is in the Bible? Yeah. Um you talking about how we honor our body? Exactly. Yeah. Well, um one of the really cool things is is when I, um, when I did a teaching for our church in, in, in just a couple months ago, my pastor a asked me, he said, Hey, will you, um, will you use, you know, some of these, will you use some scripture to validate a lot of the things you're doing? And so, so first Corinthians six, 19 and 20 says, do, do you not know that your bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit, right? It says, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You Listen to this. You are not your own. You were bought at a price, right? You were bought at a price, right? I wanted to read it to you from the message translation because I think this is super important. And it says, therefore, honor God with your bodies, right? And when you're, when you're, when you're super talking, my, my, my client I had before this, um, she, she's been called to kind of um, encourage people, women who've had a hard time wanting to be pregnant about encouraging their and speaking positive things over their bodies. And, and when, when you think about this, uh, my wife's lifelong scripture is Ephesians 2.10. And that says, for we are God's masterpiece. So think about that. We are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in his image, right? So we can do good things things that he has planned for us before the foundation of the world. And if you think about that, um, and it even goes down to like in first Timothy, um, Niku, it says for physical training is of, is of great value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and life to come. And then it, you know, God continues to talk about that in Genesis and in Samuel in the beginning of the Bible. And so I think it's super important that, you know, you brought that up as I prepare for my speech, I'm talking about a lot of things about how God says, you know, it starts with the physical, 
and then the spiritual, like God's given us a spirit, soul, and body. I actually talked to Niku about this the other day, right? And, and everybody asked me like, what's the difference? Like, you know, how do I determine one of my clients asked me, you know, what is the difference in my spirit, soul, and body? And so we went through this. And I think when you realize that, when you realize the importance of your spirit, man, you know, um, I was just sharing with Niku that um, right before this, I did a, an interview with, with Dr. Amy Rucker. And, and we were talking about, you know, as we go through this journey, we have to do these self-examinations of where our physical body is, where our spiritual man is, and how, you know, we can't save everybody, but we, we, we also need to be a light that people are watching us, right? Like people are looking at us and saying, well, how is he able to tell me how to take care of my body when he doesn't take care of his body? And, and I don't believe it's coincidence. I'll finish with this. It's my pastor said yesterday in, in, um, he, he said, look, there's no condemnation here. He said, but the reason I strive to be better, healthier is because I want to set an example for everybody in this church. And he said, for those of you, the church is unhealthy. Like the church is dying because everybody's sick. Everybody's having strokes and everybody's having diabetes and everybody. And we're supposed to be the example. We're supposed to be the example that people look to, not just from a spiritual standpoint, but from a physical standpoint. So I think for me, that transition allows me to look different from that because it's such an important part if, if you have I, I i think i shared this with somebody the other day um uh, i have a chair right here that i normally do when we do speaking engagements because i don't want to sit the whole time so i it's a it's a three-legged stand um and i set the ipad or the uh computer up on it and it has this microphone kind of connects to a pad and lisa made it for me and um it has three legs right and i think about it like your spirit soul and body what if one part of those, that leg is not functioning, the table falls down, right? And I think that that's, that's where striving, when you work with a client, I'm not just going to work with a client. I, I believe, and, 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 I, and I truly believe this, Niku, I believe a lot of people's physical health problems are spiritual. Amen. I believe that 100%. So yeah, the body 100%. Keeps the score. You have emotional traumas, 100%. all these things, they, they manifest themselves into your body. You think about Stress. it. As so many clients come to me, they're like, oh, my knee hurts, my hip hurts, my back hurts. And I started to talk to them. And, and I know you're not into the, the chakras and the solar plexus and all that energy stuff. But as a yoga teacher, I've studied it. So I'll speak to it very briefly. One thing that a yoga teacher told me about 15 years ago, I was in a class and my, my right hip was on fire. It was hurting. And I'm sitting there crying in a pose. And he sees the tears streaming down my face. He comes over to me. He's like, child, let go. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, child, let go. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, your hips are the junk drawer that you stuff all your held emotions and trauma in. And interestingly enough, I was victim of abuse about five years prior to that. And it was, it was sexual abuse. So that part of my body was damaged. Right. But there was emotions that I held there. So as I'm working to this pose, trying to open up my hips, all of this emotion is starting to come out and it's manifesting itself in tears. So it, it was spiritual. It was emotional. It was physical. It was mental. It, it was all manifesting in my body. But what I felt was hip pain, but that pain was stemming from an emotional aspect, from a mental 100%. aspect, from the same trauma that I experienced, right? Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. My mom's going through my mom. My mom sent me these texts, Niku, after I came back from being with her. And, and I basically told her, I said, look, you got to push through some of these things. Mm -hmm. First, you got to heal mentally, physically, and spiritually. And what she's done. Mm -hmm. And I said, a lot of this stuff is, is you're allowing these emotions to affect you in an even more massive way. I said, you got to get up and fight through these. And she told me, she sent me a text after I came back. And she, she basically said to me from, which is something, you know, you always, I mean, our parents and our family, you know, this, um, are the hardest people to, to get to. Right. And my, my mom said this, I, she said from God's lips to your ears, from your lips to my ears. Okay. When you whispered in my ear to fight, it brought out something that I had forgotten. I had. Now think about that. My mom's like the pulpit is calling. She she always says that the pulpit, my mom says that the pulpit is always calling me, right? Because she knows, and I'm actually teaching at my church next, this next month on with a couple other people and, and, you know, and then teaching and speaking is, is a gifting. And, and I know that, that there's that place in there, but just that, just, just think about it from God's lips to your ears. When you whispered in my ear to fight, it brought out something in me that I had forgotten that I'd had, you know, have you ever heard that um, old 
saying, um, out of sight, out of mind, right? Mm -hmm. Like if, if it's like water, if I don't have my water in my visual, nine times out of 10, I'm not going to drink enough water today and get in the amount that I want, right? It's the same thing that if I hit a snooze button, right? Or if I say no, right, to something. Mm -hmm. My pastor asked me to, to be in the school of ministry, and I said no. And then he asked again, and I said no. And then he asked again, and I said yes. Why? Because timing. Timing is everything when it comes to us being able, like you, you know, you're taking all this time now and learning boundaries, when to say yes, when to say no when to be a mom, when to be a wife, right? Like, you know, and I think it's super important that we realize that these emotions, you know, we have spirit, soul, and body, but we also have our mind, our will, and our emotions, mm -hmm. right? And our mind, the, the only, my grandmother used to say this, Nico, she used to say the only place that, that the devil can mess with you is in your mind, your will, and your emotions, so I was texting Niku the other day and I said, Hey, do you make emotional decisions a lot? And she said, absolutely. Right. Like, like, just like, yeah, I like oh, this. I'm person. Awesome. Yeah, I get so like excited. I'm like, Oh, I can do that. Yes. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. Or, or I, you know, Hey, I want to be, I want to connect with this person. Hey, I want to connect with this person. Let's just all connect. Right. And we know that we learn that that can't be truth. You know, it's like you learn something about somebody that you don't know. Right. Like you, you, you have this, visualization of a person and then you you you're like oh really right you know and so you you have to learn to say no i told niku like you know i have to learn to say no to certain things there's there's people that come into our life that relationships are toxic like i told her i shared this with her that you know i believe the reason i lost all the money that we lost previously is because of one decision that god kept trying to pull me away from and i kept trying to pull back and I brought in, which was a codependent relationship. If you're listening, do a self-examination of your relationships and make sure you have no codependent relationships where God's trying to close the door, but you're trying to keep the door open, right? Like this person is not pushing you farther towards your goals. You can still love them and be their friend, but you, you don't want to have that intimacy. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing is, 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 you know, people that go into a new spiritual journey, which I want to encourage you really quickly is that. You know, you, you, I led a girl to Christ, like Niku just recommitted her life recently to God. And, 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 and I didn't tell her to do this, but she literally went into her office and started getting rid of things. And she's like, I just want to give them away. And I was like, no, you don't want to give them away. You want to throw them away. Why would, why would I want to give something like, 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 I'm going to be honest. She, I told her all this thing. And then I had to do a self-examination of myself. Like I have all these records in my attic that are worth a lot of money, right? Do I sell them and make a lot of money and give them to somebody else when they're kiss records that means night in Satan's asylum or night in Satan's service? Or do I just get rid of them? So you have to kind of do these self-examinations, spirit, soul, and body, mind, will, and emotions. And when all of those are balanced out, you actually step in to becoming that person that God's called you to be spirit, soul, and body, mind, will, and emotions, because you, you make better decisions when you're in alignment with God's plan and purpose for your wife than just making emotional decisions. Like I made from bringing a guy into my business because he talked a good talk, but I really didn't seek after God and say, is this guy really supposed to be? And then he was a liar. He was the narcissist. He did all these things. But on the outside, he looked really, really good from a from a mind perspective. But he was he was two hundred pounds overweight. Not, I mean, all this stuff that we don't do. And I hope that if you're listening today, you'll continue. My friend Cole Hatter, who actually gave me this award, the Thrive Award that you were talking about earlier, he talked about doing self examinations of where you're at in life, right? Like these constant self examinations, and you have to ask yourself, hey, um, how's my marriage? You know, am I supporting my spouse? Uh, I, 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 I was sharing some of these things with Niku about, you know, me challenging her to let this not sweat the small stuff, right? Like let these things go, right? Like it's just not worth it, right? Like it's when you be, to, the Bible says to become one, right? You, your commitment to that person is supposed to be for the rest of your life. Now we know that divorce happens and that happens, but 
your commitment is to a strand of three cords. That's you, God, and your spouse, right? That unity comes even, and it's funny, my pastor was talking about being equally yoked with somebody who's a believer, right? Doesn't mean if you're not that you leave that person, right? God, God pulls those people in, like my dad getting saved at, you know, 70 some years old, right? 70 years old, right? I never gave up on him. I just kept praying for him. And same thing with my stepmom. She's like, I'm just, you know, I met your dad. I married him. He wasn't saved. I don't know what I was thinking, but now he's saved. And I, I have the availability to, you know, breed upon that and expand that. So I think that's a super important part when you're looking at those type of things. Pray for hope. Pray, Pray. hope. Faith. Hope and faith. Hold on. There's my faith. And then here is on the other side of hope, there has to always be love. Faith. Hope, I love that. Love. So I try to keep that on me every single day. And it's just a reminder, right? Because we all go through challenges and, and it's okay to be going through things right now and to maybe not have some of this spiritual connection that Michael's talking about. I mean, I didn't have it for well, you it's had it off years. and on. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, is that I said this to Niku that she's went through this. Can I call it confusion, right? We don't, we don't, we don't look at it like that, but there's a lot of times we go through things and we don't experience them. And then something traumatic happens and we're looking for something else. We're always searching, right? It's yeah. like, um, it's like my grandmother said, you're all, the devil will always try to defeat you in your mind, your will, and your emotions because he knows that he can tug at that on you. Right. Mm -hmm. But when you have a real experience with God, like Niku talked about a couple weeks, uh, a week or two ago on her Instagram about going into the church, right. And going into the church and experiencing God. Yeah. Right. We, powerful. we can, we can believe nobody can negate an experience. If I go on a trip and I come back and Niku asks me, Hey Mike, how was your trip? Tell me about it. If I tell her about it, she can't say, well, I don't believe you because I experienced it. It doesn't matter what she believes. Right? right. I experienced that. So there's a lot of people like, like they, they, they want to question God or, you know, it's like my friend, one of my good friends that Nico and I talked about on our Saturday talk about my friend whose mom was raised in the Holocaust and came out of this traumatic thing. And he became uh, a pastor raised in a Jewish family. And now he saves babies all around the world. Like, that's a miracle. That's an experience. That's something that nobody can say that that didn't happen. That wasn't real. And I think a lot of times, you know, whether we're, no matter where you are spiritually, take, take in what you can take in from that perspective and understand that it's, it's, it's a season for you to learn and grow in every aspect, whether you're searching your health or whatever, it's just, it's all about that. It's about where you are now I want to read and where you're going, that. not looking back. It's a season. It's a season. It's not a forever. It's a season. So I was raised just to give some clarity to the audience that is a little bit newer to my story. I'm, I'm Persian American. I'm first generation Persian American. Both my mother and my father are immigrants from Iran. They fled during right before the revolution when the Shah was being overthrown by the current regime. My father came here with nothing, landed in Florida. My mother came here with nothing, landed in LA. My father made his way from Florida to Beaumont, Texas. His college roommate at the time was my mother's older brother. He saw the picture on the mantle of my mother and said, I'm going to marry her. My uncle said, hell no, you're not. That's my little sister. My father made a drive out to LA, married my mother. Boom, there you go. And then the two of them had me. I was an accident. My parents, when they got married, were not sure if they were going to stay married. They had a very uh, difficult time for many reasons, but let's just say I was a honeymoon baby and my mother wasn't sure if she was going to keep me. It just is what it is. Yep. Thank God she did because I am amen. here now. So amen by that. But I say all this because in the Persian culture, it comes from the mother's side. Whatever your mother is, your grandmother is, is what religion you inherit, right? So my grandmother is, is Muslim. She's of the Islamic faith. She prays five times a day to Mecca. She's and the most amazing, incredible, soulful, sweet, grounded, spiritual, kind person I've ever met in my life. She is like a mother Teresa, hundred percent. That is my grandmother. She's 95 years young, still alive, still walking, breathing, doing all things on her own. My mother didn't choose to follow in her mother's faith, my grandmother's faith. So my grandmother is very 
very holy, very divinely connected, doesn't have a lot of worry. And she's 95 years young and healthy and doing great. My mother allowed me as a child to kind of explore different forms of religion. So I was put into Rainbow Room, which is a, a preschool that was Christian based. And I was put into Seventh Day Adventist School, which is a very like strict. You've been all around the block, community. girlfriend. A hundred percent. And then in middle school, I went to, the, to Rome and we were going to see the, the Pope and the Vatican. So I did Catholicism. And then I started to, to study Zoroastrianism and Hinduism. And then at 19, I got into yoga. So then I started to study more about Buddha. Buddhism and the little self and the big self, right? That you covered them all. You covered them all. A hundred percent. And my, my high school sweetheart who we were together and we almost got married and it was, it was incredible, whatever. He brought me back to the Christian faith and my faith was strong when him and I were together. We would go to church every single Sunday. It was incredible. Then things happened. My dad got sick. The relationship didn't work out. And I kind of stepped away from religion a little bit. When I was 21 years old, my father, who had been battling cancer for seven years at that point, um, lost his battle. And it wasn't to the actual cancer. He was uh, he went through a stem cell transplant, which actually got rid of the cancer. So he was cancer free. However, his immune system never bounced back from the stem cell transplant. His white blood cells never went up. So he caught a common cold that immediately turned into pneumonia. He was hospitalized on Wednesday and passed away on Saturday, February 14th of 2009. And when that happened suddenly and unexpectedly, I was 21 engaged to be married to who I thought was the love of my life. And my father was taken from me before my college graduation, which was happening only months later. Before I was walked down the aisle, only months later, I, I said, you know what? God wouldn't do that to me. I don't believe in God anymore. And I stepped away from my faith. And I said, I'm done with this. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you because right. I, I, yeah. uh, I'm sure you have a similar story. So at 21, I stepped away from my faith. I said, nope, I don't believe in it. That's not my thing. And I got very into yoga and meditation and mindfulness and, and just connecting to source energy. And it's interesting because the more I studied all these religions, the more I see so many similarities in all of these things. Of course, that's where they come from. Every the the movies, the secret, all these things. Totally. And, and and we won't mention it, but there's people that we know right now that have created these programs and these stuff that they've taken bits and pieces out of the truth. It's like, you know, one of my friends the other day, Niku said, uh, my friend Agnes Pryor, he posted this and he's just this humble guy from Canada. And he said, Isn't it funny how every religion is created by someone? who had a bad experience with their faith, right? Like, and they just gravitate from the truth. But he said, isn't it funny how science is now caught up to the Bible? Like literally caught up to where we are, the faith that we have and the things that go through that. So, yeah, so that's, I mean, and then, so, so tell me what happened now. I'm kind of interested in hearing now. So, so, so then so you, 21, I walk away, I get very into yoga, very into yoga. I am a certified yoga teacher, master Pilates trainer, all things movement, which is so interesting. We we're talking about our body is our gift. It's our temple. We must honor it. And in Ephesians, you were saying that God says we are God's masterpiece. Well, let's talk about that for a second. We are all a masterpiece because we are all a piece of the master. We are all a masterpiece because we are all a piece of the master. So no matter what you believe in, if you are a yogi, you know that there's the little self, right? We are the drop of water in the greater self, which is the ocean. In Christianity, we are all a piece of the master. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. And we break bread in his honor. We are all a masterpiece because we are all a piece of the master. We're all here to make an impact. We're all perfectly imperfect. The question I ask myself all the time is, if not me, then who? If not now, then when? But I say all of this to, to reiterate. At 21, I said, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in faith. If God really existed, my father's been fighting for seven years against his diagnosis to overcome non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, where he was diagnosed at 42 years young right? Which is ridiculous. This is a disease that's supposed to come in your sixties and seventies later in life, not at 42 years young and healthy. Right. And the doctors didn't have a good prognosis for him in the beginning, but my father said, you know what, let me show you, let me show you, let me show you. All I've seen is resiliency and strength and courage and grace 
from my father. This is the example that I was born with. And for God to just yank him away from me in four days time on Valentine's day of all days, he's now my eternal Valentine. If you see one thing here, Michael, and if you're watching this on YouTube, I have one tattoo on my entire body and it's angel okay. rings and it's on my left wrist. Cause it's the closest to my heart. So I have my guardian angel, my father with me right there on my wrist. I say all this to say, I walked away from my faith at 21 years old. I had gone into another relationship with another person that I was engaged to. Yes, I'm a a serial fiance. They call me the runaway fiance. They say runaway brides. I'm a runaway fiance. Get excited. That you're a runaway fiance. Yeah. That engagement didn't go well either. He was incredibly, uh, religious and I was not. And the closer we got to our, our wedding day, he was like, you, you need to stop wearing makeup. You need to put your hair up in a bun. You need to stop wearing jewelry. You need to not wear tank tops. You need to cover your shoulders. You, he's not, out. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, you can't wear yoga pants anymore. You need to wear knee length skirts or longer um, because that's too distracting. And I was like, you know what? Peace. This isn't going to work. <laughs> so I, I, I called sure. that one off too. get excited. I say all this to say I stepped away from religion and then I just turned 34 last week. And two weeks ago, a good friend of mine, Megan and her boyfriend, Charlie invited Kai and I, my son and I to go to church with them. And we went to impact church here in Scottsdale. And when I walked in, I felt like I was home again. I felt like God just wrapped his arms around me, gave me a hug and said, it's okay. I'm here for you. I've been waiting for you. Welcome back home. And I started just crying and I haven't been practicing faith or religion or Christianity for 13 years. I haven't been singing the hymns or opening my Bible for 13 years, but right there, when they started to sing the songs, the words came back like it was yesterday. And I just started singing. And I look well, over. That, that's a representation of that. That's a, re- well, you know, it's just like when it, that's scripture. So it's, it's the, the, the Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us, right? Like Jesus became flesh. But that's the word. So that's really, if you read the scriptures, that's you experiencing the word and experience. It's like uh, my friend Michael Kuliana said, you know, there's always miracles that happen every day. Like Tim Story's book talks about miracles and, you know, and miracle mentality. And, and, but there's miracles happen every, but the greatest miracle just happened. It's, it's when the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead takes residence inside. It's like when you, it's like when you go to a church and you know the Holy Spirit's not there, you know, you walk in dead as a doornail, no, no Holy Spirit, no manifestation of worshiping God or praying or anything like that, no movement, nothing, right? And then you go to a church like you go to and you walk on the property and people are out there praying and interceding and the Holy Spirit. And, and this is how Michael said it. He held his fingers up and he said, this is how salvation happens. He said, when you invite God to come into your life, he'll never force himself into your life because if he did, it would, wouldn't be love. Yes. He, 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 you have to invite him in, you invite him into your heart. And then the same, this is the most, this is the most incredible miracle ever performed. And it happens when one person Bible says, God says he leaves the 99 to save Niku, the 99 to save Michael, the 99 to save whoever that may be. Right. My father who he saved. He says he takes residence, the spirit, when you invite God to come into your heart. God, I, I receive you as my savior. Come into my heart. Immediately he comes into your heart. And then that spirit takes it so that you can have fellowship and intimacy and you can grow in your relationship because now that same spirit, but it goes into a little bit more about what you'll hear me talk about in my conference. I'm talking about why if God lives inside of us, if the Holy Spirit dwells inside of us, why would we have gluttony and eat like crazy and why would we not exercise and why would we not drink water and why would we drink so you know all these things that the mind will and emotions takes over instead of the spirit soul and the body being the representation of what we've experienced and so that's kind of pushed me to really encompass it in everything that i teach people you have people that come to you and you they're like well i'm super healthy and i'm this and i'm like well how are you spiritually how are you with your wife how are you with forgiveness how are you how are you with you know manifestation of uh you know things in your home and and stuff like that and i think that's a big piece that we miss and then you know people take those things and deviate them away from that so yeah i think it's super important that you've allowed yourself now to know, to be back home and to be able to know that that's, it's home, safety. It it's and peace. let's talk about that. Cause I know a lot of people that are listening right now are either thinking, oh my gosh, I, I get what you're saying. I'm right there with you. Or they're thinking, 
spirituality is not for me. Faith is not for me. I, I, I just want to, I want to hear about entrepreneurship. I want to hear about business. I want to hear about success. I want to hear yeah. about the athletes. And they're probably listening to this and they're saying this, this episode isn't for me, right? Let's talk about how we have failed forward in our spirituality, how we have failed forward in finding our way back to this source, to this, to this message. Can you talk yeah. to me about your journey? Cause I'm sure yours wasn't a, a smooth road. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's funny. Like even, you know, I had, um, I've had an up and down journey from that experience. And I think so many people, it's really funny. I had this young boy who um, heard one of my, I was interviewed on another podcast and he called me and he said, Hey, I want to know the Jesus that, you know, and I was like, what does that mean to you, Andrew? And he said, I see, you know, I, I go to church, but I see this person in my father. That's an alcoholic. I see my mom who, still lives with my dad and petrified. And it's funny. That was my life. I lo- my mom and I loved God and my dad was an alcoholic and, and, and we were scared of him. Right. And, um, you know, he tried to kill me, shit, put a gun to me and, you know, it was good. told me to get out of my house and just so many things that, that went on from that perspective of me knowing that my calling was, was important because God kept rescuing me. Even when I was away from my, my wife, my wife for a couple of years, I almost died three times. And, um, I, I thought to myself when that happened that, you know, God's, God's not done with me. God's given me a chance, you know, but we never look at those opportunities. You know, it's like going into, um, um, going into a room on clubhouse, you know, like on Sundays and hearing a message And it's drawing you, but your past, maybe a bad experience with religion, or maybe you've just never really known that God is real and that he, you can have a relationship with him or, you know, your experience with a spouse or somebody like that is not went the way. And then you just blame it on that. Like we have to do self-examinations of ourself. And for me, um, you know, I, I want to be that person that, doesn't judge people that forgives that walks in unity and oneness. But I also want to be that person that stands up. You know, people say to me all the time, Niku, you know, are you, aren't you afraid that you talk about God a lot and that people are not going to want to work with you? And I said, no, because I have to, I have a Bible in my hand right now as we speak. I have to be held accountable to this not to man and what man thinks, right? And in this word, it says, if I deny him before men, he'll deny me before the father. I don't know about you, but I don't want that, right? The Bible says, if I deny him before man, he'll deny me before the father. So I'm, I'm going to be a witness unto men, no matter where I'm at, because I do not want to be denied. Ed, Ed Milet says this, Ed Milet is one of my favorite Christian entrepreneurs. Um, if you go to YouTube and you Google Ed Milet uh, in heaven, um, it's about a, I think it's about two minutes, it's between one minute and two minutes long. And he says this, and I'll finish this with your question. So that it kind of tells you where, where I'm, what I'm driven to, right? This sums it up when Ed says this, if you guys don't know, Ed is a, a billionaire. He lives in a, you know, a hundred million dollar home and has a- airplanes and flights. And, you know, he just does, he, he's just an amazing dude, right? If you haven't listened to his podcast, you should listen to his podcast. My my goal is one day to be on his podcast and have him on my, my podcast. And um, uh, Bill Hess in the mornings on Breakfast with Champions, he's inter- just interviewed him on his podcast. And so one of the things that Ed says, he said, one day, he says, I have to stand before God. He said, you can't stand before him for me and I can't stand before him with you. You have to stand before him one day. And he said, I believe that God is creating this Mike, this Niku, And he said, I'm a Christian and I wake up every day and I strive that. So when that day happens, when I either die or God comes back and I have to stand before him, that that person that he created is my twin, not a stranger. He said, because when I look at him, I want to put my arm around him and it be my twin. And then in this year, and he's, he's told it different times. He told it at 10 X a little bit different. And he said, I want to hear God say, well done, good and faithful servant in this year, as I'm looking at the person that he created me to be. He said, I do not want that person to be a stranger. He said, because then think about it, we get, we get eternity to look back 
and examine the areas in our lives that where we failed, you know, where we, and, and then, and then, you know, we get to be in paradise. It's, it's our homecoming. It's a strive. When you know that, you know, that the Bible says, you know, that, you know, that, you know, you have that availability to use that. You know, it's, it's, it's like when guys, when coaching clients, I'm getting ready to launch, um, um, after the summer, a, uh, a VIP days where people will come here and spend a half a day or a full day with me uh, several times a month, but anywhere from five to 10 days a month, we'll be doing that. And, and, and what I want to, what I want to do is, is, and I've done this with guys before, um, uh, before the pandemic, obviously now since with the pandemic, we're called it a pandemic, but I don't really call it that, but the COVID-19, you know, what we went through, um, I, I sit down and, and I ask guys where they are spiritually, you know, are you having sex with your wife? Are you, you know, are you, you know, what are you doing? And I've had guys that sit with me and say, well, I haven't had sex with my wife in four or five years. Well, are you really being the person that God's called you to be to do that? And, uh, it, you know, you, you should, you should surround yourself. John Maxwell, um, said to me one day in a private mastermind group, he said, um, you have to be intentional in every area of your life from your spiritual to your physical to, he goes, look, I failed in the physical. He said, it. I failed in the physical. He said, the reason I'm still working in my seventies is because I know that I have to strive to be better in the physical. Right. And then he goes, I'll probably work until I'm 80. You know, he said, most people I know, they don't believe in retirement, right? It's repositioning. Right. And so I, I, I really believe in that too. Nico. I think that as we go through this, you want to really strive to be in the physical, you know, whether it's your gut health or whether it's your sleep or whatever it is, it has to, it, it, it should push you because of who God's created you to be and how he values how you take care of your body. So hope that helps someone today listening, because I think it's super, super important. I love that. And thank you for sharing that. With that being said, let's, let's do a little pivot. So we've talked a lot about spirit, spirituality, faith. I want to, I want to ask you a couple of questions and I want to pivot to the physical. Okay. One, number one, you said something when we first started the episode. And you said that you are very choosy about who you surround yourself with. And if they're not of the right energy, then you distance yourself from certain people. I talk about this all the time with my business coaching clients and with my health coaching clients and with my Pilates clients. And I always tell them, I was like, you are the average of the five people that you spend the most amount of time with. So be picky and choosy about the people that you allow to pour into you, to influence you, right? To be, because it, it, those conversations are going to affect you positively or negatively. You're picking up on their habits. You're being influenced by their behavior, right? Their words. How do you choose your starting five? Let's uh, go to basketball. How do you choose your starting five? And how do you choose who goes or on baseball? My, my, my position players, right? You got it. Well, there's right. a lot so, more position players, but I'm just talking about five. So let's, okay. Well, I, I would five. say, and it's funny you brought this up because, um, in a, in a, in a book, in a room the other day on clubhouse, somebody brought up that I shared this, um, you know, men are, are really hard at this. Nico women, you guys, you have a lot of friends and people that you talk to. And sometimes women gravitate more towards men from, for mentors and respect. Right. But men don't have best friends. One, we did a Bible study and they showed these statistics and one in one in 10 men have, um, a bet, a, a friend that they feel comfortable sharing, you know, like life stuff with and stuff. And one in 20 have a best friend. So, so think about that. That's five in a hundred or, you know, and, and to me, that's scary when you don't have somebody that you can share that to. And I started to do that self-examination, started asking people those questions. And I think it's hard. I think it's hard for you. Like, like my, my go-to people has, has, has shrunk like, like, um, our business coach, Israel Duran, who is Niku's business coach too. He's one of my go-to guys. He's one of my five, right? My pastor is one of my five, right? He pours into me. I pour into him. You know, the other day I have a Facebook group and I saw an ad request from him. I'm like, really? You know, Why? Cause he sees the value in me. He's constantly talking to me. I sit in the back of church in the mornings before service. And he goes out of his way to come my way to talk to me and give me a hug every morning, every Sunday. Right. And he'll say, Hey, I noticed you're not here next week. Uh, you know, is there anything we can pray about? And then I'll tell him, you know, and so it, there's, there's, there's him. And then there's, you know, there's, there's other people that I have, you know, that, 
um, from a spiritual standpoint, my, my podcast guy, the guy that edits all my podcasts and does all my podcast stuff, uh, my friend Don Gadsden, he's doing my YouTube channel right now. He's one of my go-to guys. Like I can call him and we can pray and we can talk and anything happens. You know, my spiritual father, Dr. Randall Langley, who ordained me into the ministry last year in August, he's one of my go-to guys. So I don't, I, I, I don't, I want to have somebody that's going to, to encourage me, but somebody who's going to correct me. Somebody who's not going to just always tell me what I need to hear or what I want to hear, but what I need to hear. And I think that a lot of us gravitate towards people that tell us what tell us things and don't correct us. And John Maxwell says, you never correct without encouragement. Just think about that for a second. You never correct without encouraging. So I don't ever correct my clients without encouraging them. You know, I have a, a lady that just lost 60 pounds since January, right? And, um, you know, she's struggling spiritually from some trauma of her past. And so I corrected her and then I sharpened her. And then she wrote my wife this long email about how that conversation impacted her life because she'd never done a self-examination of that area of her life, right? And I think that when you think about that, whether you're a male or a female, I'm obviously a male and I know what men go through. They don't have those best friends. They don't have people that they can do that. So I would tell you, I'll finish with this. Most important thing I did in 2020 was have two accountability partners. They're not in my life this year. One of them is, but one of them's not. So I replaced that person, bless you. I replaced that person with someone else. Someone else that challenges me, holds me accountable, makes me do things, you know, and, and it's my business coach and it's Israel. And we talk every week, you know, I say, Hey, look, you know, where am I failing? How can I do? And then I ask him the same thing. And, and we, 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 we challenge each other and the same thing with my pastor. Hey, he's like, Hey, I really need to talk to you. You know, I've been doing this challenge from the gym. Uh, I'm not losing enough weight. And I think it's because of what you told me that I'm not eating enough. Right. And so you, you have to surround yourself around people who make, who push you to become better, not push people who are pulling you down. I, I will say this. If you have people that are uh, spiritually pulling you down, physically pulling you down, emotionally pulling you down, everything's negative that comes out of your mouth. You need to avoid those type of people. You need to avoid, you need these two things. This is what you need in people who you surround yourself with. Your starting five is somebody who encourages you and sharpens you, but somebody who makes you better in every area of your life. Someone who sets an example, not somebody who's perfect because none of us are perfect, but somebody who sets an example that you can actually look at them and see areas in your life that you need to be challenged in and then look for people, look for people in the area where you're struggling that are good in and learn from them. Amen. I Super, love that. Important. Super important. I want to go back to what you're saying, how your, your pastor, he sent you a request to join your private Facebook group, Facebook group. And you're saying, why, why is he someone that I look up to someone that is a mentor to me, a spiritual mentor and leader for me? Why is he wanting to be a part of my private Facebook group? And the reason why is, and this is going to get a little new age on you, a little spiritual, a little woo woo, but, but stay with me for a moment. Your vibe attracts your tribe. So our bodies are all energy, frequency, and vibration. And we need to find ways to increase our vibration, to increase our frequency, to increase, improve, uplift our energy, whether that's through working out, supplementation, mindfulness, meditation, prayer, community. We need to find ways to improve and uplift our energy to that of a positive energy, right? Yep, and to improve 100%. our frequency, think of it like a radio. I want to dial in to the radio station where you live and Israel lives. And if I need to get on that frequency so that I can be connected to you. If I'm on 102.7 and you're on 103.1, we're not hearing the same thing. We're not connecting. So well, you that answers not- your question from earlier. It, you're like, it, how did I get in with you? And I'm like, because our frequencies are on the same channel. We're right? on the same. And we did the work to get our frequency dialed okay. into that radio station so that we can have this connection. We can have this conversation. I love so it. stick with me, stick with me, because I'm going to go a little bit deeper. Vibration. There is spirituality. Yes, we are sons and daughters of God. Yes. But we are also energetic beings that are vibrating. 
from a cellular level, our cells are vibrating. And some of us vibrate very, very well. Our DNA. Our DNA is vibrating. Yes. And if you've read the book, The Maps of the Levels of Consciousness, we have different levels of consciousness. And the lowest of those levels of consciousness is blame and shame. And so many of us, especially mothers, so I'm speaking to my mothers right now because this is a huge community on the Failing Forward podcast. And I want to pour into you and I want to, I want to get into your heart right now. So mama, you're listening. Listen to me clearly when I say this. Stop operating from a place of mom guilt and blaming yourself and shaming yourself and saying that you are not enough because your body is listening and your cells are listening to your thoughts, to your words. And what's happening is you're lowering your level of consciousness. You're lowering your vibration. You're lowering yeah. your energy and you're not operating from a place of negativity and blame and shame and self-destruction and torturing yourself. And it's not, he wrote on here, identity. I love shame that. Shame and guilt. This is shame from my last guilt. conversation. It's the lowest of the vibrations. We want to get you to a place of neutrality. And then from a place of neutrality, start to build you into a place of joy and courage and get you all the way up to the highest of the vibrations, which is love. And it's in love that we connect to our highest selves and we connect to our spiritual selves. So when you told me, Mike, why is my pastor asking to be part of my, my Facebook group? It's because your vibe attracts your tribe. You've done the work to increase your energy, to increase your vibration, to dial in your frequency to a place where now people are being attracted to you. Positivity. The right attracts. people. Yeah, the right. Yes. And, and it's the right people because that, well, they're, that's they're on the, your yeah. frequency. They're on your well, frequency. And, well, yeah. And, and it's funny you say that because now I think back to why. And I used to always wonder what about this because so you just confirmed it to me. So I always wonder why like, I've always had an attraction from pastors. Like my last pastor is still my friend. He just, he just, he didn't retire because he doesn't believe in retire. He's 70 and, and he still, I still helped him with his health. My previous pastor is still connected. I've always had favor with those type of people. So I think it's, I think what we have to constantly do is do what you just said, you know, have, find out that our identity is not in our failures. Our identity is in who we are and who God created us to be. So yeah. minus the shame, minus the guilt, Minus all that self uh, just, doubt. Just learn to fail forward in life. Don't get attached to the past, right? Because when you're living in the past, that's why so many people are depressed because you're focused on what happened to you on the previous experiences, which we have no control over. Allow them to be lessons and experiences in life to help propel you forward, to help you fail forward, to help you learn more about why did God make me go through this? What was his purpose? It was because he had a message and experience that he needed you to learn from, to grow from, because you can't help other people that are going through it until you've mastered it and made it to the other side. So you know why, you know why? Cause you just went through it. hundred percent. You just spoke your healing that you just have recently went through. Cause you've struggled with depression as much as, you know, a month ago. Right. And things that you've went through and, and you've just, you just overcame it. You just literally manifested and spoke but you didn't know you were doing, but you were. So I'm just telling you, cause I was laughing and smiling inside that you just spoke your healing. So what you have to do now is walk in that because, yeah. cause what happens is, is Dr. Amy Rucker and I were talking about this is that people read it. There's an old, and that sounds terrible, but there's a scripture in the Bible that says it's like a dog that returns to its vomit, right? What does it do? Goes back, eats it, does it again, right? It's disgusting, but it's true, but it's disgusting because we do it. Mm -hmm. right so we pick back that up we say okay god i'm laying this at your feet right i'm laying all this anxiety and depression and all this stuff at your feet and i'll be back to pick it up you know next week or two weeks or a month or six months or a year right i'm not laying it down and dr amy was talking about how she had to she's writing a book on how to uh, manifest and how to realize the right relationships and she said, I had to break a generational curse on my life of horrible relationships, right? Like, like you talked about, you know, like the, the, the fiance queen, right? And you had all these horrible experiences till you finally met somebody that you got married to, right? And, and now you're, you're becoming this patriarch of your family spiritually, you know, so that you can literally be until those manifestations happen until those that transfer transformation of you that's that's came continue to impact more lives and to influence more lives. So I pray if you're listening that you rewind this about a minute and listen to what Niku said about herself and her journey, because that's you. 
you're listening to this and the difference between wisdom and knowledge is taking action on what you learn. So thank you for sharing that. You didn't even know you were doing it, but that's what you were doing. So I love that. Well as done. We're as we're talking about, you know, I think we, we've kind of stemmed into mental health for a second. So let's talk about it for a moment. I, I deal with a lot of clients of mine and it, it could be my Pilates clients that come and I can just feel their energy when they walk in. I'm like, okay, what's going on? What's wrong? Let's talk about this for a moment. And I could just feel that they're heavy. They're holding something. They've gone through something and they'll open up to me and just say, you know, I'm just really depressed right now. I'm just really sad. I feel really isolated, whether it's a pandemic or it's whatever going on. And I tell them, I'm like, well, what are you thinking about? Because often the depression is stemming from you focusing on something that's outside of your control, number one, or you're focused on experiences that happened to you in the past. And you haven't learned from those experiences in a positive way. You're focusing them on them as a negative thing, number two. Or they come to me and they just say, I'm just really anxious. I feel like I'm having a panic attack. I feel like I'm having a heart attack. I'm just really worried. I have a lot of fear. And fear and anxiety comes oftentimes from focusing too far in the future. You're planning too much for what's going to happen in an hour from now, tomorrow, a year from now, 10 years from now. I have a friend of mine. She's a dear friend of mine who is a couple years younger than me, and she's still not married yet. And she wants nothing more than to be married and have children right now today. So she's just focused on the future and how I just want to be married. I want to have children. I want to start my family. I want to get going. And I just feel her anxiety and I see how it's affecting her sleep. I see how it's affecting everything, but it's because a lot of us that are dealing with anxiety, we're not living in this present moment. And the only time and moment that we have control over is right now, this present moment. So rather than worry about what has not come yet, or focus on, on what has already happened, which is gonna tie us into depression. Let's focus on the only time that we have control over, which is right now. Learn from the past, pray for the future, but live and appreciate the present. You have moment to. The present moment is your gift. You have to, anxiety, yeah, yeah. And you know what, Nico, it's funny you say that, and and I know we'll, we'll finish with this because then we'll have to do another time because we're down to our like last five minutes. That's why I was just saying to you, but um, so I'll just say this. I've realized that more now than ever, because I always say this, Niku, I could be, I could be depressed or have anxiety if I wanted. If I looked at all this stuff that's going on in my life right now, like, you know, uh, hundreds and hundreds of DMs. We went through them last night. We worked till 930 at night. Um, I hired another VA last night. I told Niku, she's scared to do it. She's going to be doing it this week. So we're just, we're just, we're just, we're just prepping her to to let go of some things, right? Like her control, right? And her and I laugh and talk about it. I was like, I just don't know what I'm going to do, right? And I was like, you got to be in the present moment. Just let go and let God, right? And so for me, I always say this, I could be easily depressed, easily have anxiety, but I choose to be in the present. I can't control what I can't control. I have to control what I can control and leave the rest up to God, right? Like he's given me free will. I can either do things his way or my way. I, I, heck, I didn't get married until I was 40. And, um, you know, huh, my wife, my wife was looking at some pictures of me when I did modeling when I was younger. And she's like, damn, like, who are, no wonder you had all these girlfriends. Right. And, 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 and it, and it didn't make me laugh. It, I mean, I'm laughing now because of it, because of what my wife said, but it made me realize that I missed a lot of opportunity because it was about me and it wasn't about being in the moment. It was about, you know, my identity being in, you know, the attraction that I had from people and the success that I had at a young age, like Niku, I told her, she's like, you know, I was like, you can't, ha you're a mom now, you're a wife now. You can't have the same, you can still have de desires and dreams and hopes, but you're in a different state of your life. Just like me, I'm in the 21st century now. I'm not in the 20th century anymore. I have to be present in the 21st century, Right. Most people, to be honest with you, are still stuck in the 20th century, right? They're still doing things that they still feel like is, is what's best for them, but it's holding them back because they're still focused on their loss or they're still focused. And like Amy said, you know, Dr. Amy said, I'm going to write a book and I'm going to influence as many people as I can, taking my mess and turning it into a message and allowing other people not to do the same thing. That's what we're doing. That's what Niku's doing. That's the people that we're going to surround ourselves with. If you're listening and you feel like you're like, you turn your mess into a message, you turn your mess into healing that, you know, it's like Glenn said this morning on breakfast with champions. He said, there was one man that was perfect. There was one man 
that changed the entire world the way he changed it. He was God and he became a man. His name was Jesus. And that allowed him to have hope and peace. Like the Niku talked about when she walked in to the presence of God, she had peace because she was home. It's like when Joseph came back to his father, right? And he was home. He said, you know, let's have a party now. And he saved all his brothers from, from famine when they're the ones that sold him off to die, right? And he came back and he, he didn't look at his, he didn't say, I'm going to get my brothers. No, he said, I'm going to love him. I'm going to encourage him. I'm going to strengthen him. I'm going to turn all this into one of the greatest experiences in the history of the world. I'm going to, I'm become the king, right? But I'm going to bring my family in so they can experience it with me. I'm not going to say, ah, this is like me. I'll finish with this. Um, um, I, this guy who stole money from us, um, I found out that he's losing his eyesight. Okay. His eyesight's now 2,200, right? Basically blind, losing his eyesight. And, and most people will say, aren't you happy? Aren't you glad? I was like, no. Guy has three kids and a wife, even though he's a narcissist and he's going through all these issues, he's losing his eyesight. So I literally in an instant, I got down on my hands and my knees and I began to pray. And I said, God, heal his eyes, heal his heart. Let him not continue to live the way he's living. God, give him his eyesight back. Where most people would say, wow, well, aren't you happy? Like this is God's vengeance. No, because even though God allowed this to happen, he has to be the one to decide whether it's, whether he's going to change or not, whether he, he's going to be the one that, that makes a change to realize Hey, I've been walking this life and, and, and I've been hurting people and I'm hurting my family and I'm hurting my friends and I'm hurting all these people and God's taken my eyesight away, right? He's allowed it to happen to me for a reason. So just think about that as we finish. Think about that. Think of it every, every, every day someone's watching you. Every day someone's looking at how you take care of your physical body. Somebody's looking at how, how, how you're a great mom. Somebody's looking at how you're a, a, a wife, right? And how the butterfly, the, the, her father's looking down on her and, and interceding for her, right? Saying, you know, what exactly, how, how is it that, you know, it's like, um, it's like I said to Nikki before she got on, you know, she's, she started eating better and working out and sleeping and, you know, she was sleeping three and four hours. And I was like, you need to start sleeping seven or eight hours. She's put back on to like eight pounds of her muscles. She's getting some triceps over there. Skin looks better. Hair looks better. Eyes look better. She's too young to, to, not, to not be that vibrant person she is. But just remember, just remember as we finish with this, um, people are watching you. You know, your mess, your, your past is not your identity. Your identity, um, I look in the mirror every single day and I write these um, identity um, I write these identity statements, right? I write these identity statements on my mirror up here in the bathroom. And um, is it like I, an affirmation? Like I am yeah. love, I am yeah. strong. I, I, I'm great at sales. Um, my, I, yeah, just like that. I am amazing. I am love. Yeah, absolutely. And my wife will write some on the mirror for me too. Like you're a great husband, you're a great friend, you're a great man, right? And I think that, you know, it, it's, it's, it's like you, you manifest these things by verbally saying them and allowing God to know exactly, exactly. You do not owe anything to anybody. You need to prove anything to anybody. Niku's written, if you're listening, you can see she's got this. If you're watching, you can see it too, but you are already validated, right? She's saying it is a surrender time that you meet the divine, right? And that's, that's exactly what it is. So she's written down all these affirmations and manifestations, right? And that's what's important because if it's visual, you're going to act upon it. If it's not, it's just going to be a thought. It's just going to be a process, right? You know, so hopefully that helps someone, EQ. I love that. And it's so funny. This episode was supposed to be about gut health and sleep and nutrition. And I have all my, my supplements and my Axio, my life manager here. And woo, did we take a detour, but that's because we were being moved by the spirit. Yeah, and next time we'll, we'll dive into some of those other things so next time. There will be a part two, but Michael has many clients and, and a lot that he has going yeah. on. So 
Michael, I, I'm shooting my shot right here, right now. Are you going to be back on the Failing Forward podcast for part two, where we pour into people about gut health and the gut brain? Yeah, let's do it. That's part two. Is, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Part two is coming. We got it scheduled. My friends, if you have not been moved today in a positive way, send me an email. We need to get on a phone call. I need to talk to you and see what's blocking you from connection. What's blocking you from taking that step forward, failing forward in your life, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically, Michael, you have just stirred the pot in such a positive way. And I just appreciate you so much love and respect for you. Thank you so much for all that you've done for me, for my family, and you continue to do for our community. We appreciate you. We appreciate your time and we cannot wait for part two, my friend. Are there any closing remarks that you'd like to finish with? Just thank you for having me. I, I look forward to the next time. And uh, I always say this whenever I enter mine, I'll just say this, love God, love people, love God, love people, and, and live with vision. Have a vision and a purpose for your life. And that has to my, line up with what God has for you. If you have, if, if you and God's plan and purpose lines up, if he gives you that, it says he'll give you the desires of your heart. So it can't be about you. It has to be about him and the things that he desires for you. But when they match up with what you desire and what he desires, it's called life and it's called the perfect will of God. So walk it out. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Amen. You have just tuned into another episode of the Failing Forward podcast. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and share. If you know that this is a message that someone needs to hear, send it over to your friend. We need to make sure that we are coming from a place of sharing because sharing is caring. And there are people in your lives that need to hear this message today that are going through trials and tribulations today. And if this message can empower them, can inspire them, can motivate them, can give them guidance and direction, or at least let them know that they're not alone share this episode with them and follow Michael on Instagram at Michael Huey, follow him in clubhouse, listen to his speeches. We'll be back for part two. Michael, thank you so much for being with us on the Failing Forward podcast. I'm Miki Loesch until next time, my friends.